My name is Miłosz. I came here from Poland and I'd like to talk to you about using the RxJS library when calling remote APIs. Before we begin, just a few words about myself. I work at a startup company called Sumo Logic. I create, a, I, I work as a UI engineer there. We build a platform for analyzing machine data such as logs and metrics. And of course, at Sumo Logic, when we, we have some complex APIs and we are using RxJS to deal with them, to manage them. So some of the ideas in this talk came from my experience at Sumo Logic. Besides, I run a programming blog, codewithstyle.info, where I write mostly about JavaScript, TypeScript, and functional programming. Finally, in my free time, I like to run, and I like to hike in the mountains. So yesterday, I did some sightseeing of Quimbra, and with all the hills here, I felt like in the mountains, so I, I really like that city. Cool, so RxJS and APIs. RxJS, as I guess most of you know, is a library that supports the reactive programming paradigm. Reactive programming paradigm is a way of thinking where you look at everything as a stream, a stream of some values or a stream of some events. And it turns out that this is a pretty good abstraction for working with remote APIs. So if you look at an API, when you call it, it's kind of like a stream that will emit a single value in the future. What's more, with RxJS, streams, observable streams, are cancelable. And this is also something that is pretty useful when calling remote APIs something that you don't have with promises, for example. So in this talk, we are going to walk through three common issues that come up when calling remote services. That will be first caching, then working with an unstable API. So an API that sometimes fails, replies with an error. And finally, <clears throat> a polling scenario where we have an API which can be used to manage some long-running operations. Like we can start an operation, we can pull its status, we can cancel it. And again, RxJS is pretty useful here. So the entire presentation will be live coding and I'm going to assume some basic knowledge of RxJS. I'm, I'm not going to explain everything. I, I'd like to focus on the more advanced operators. All right, so let's get to the live coding part. <clears throat> so I have this very simple UI written in vanilla JavaScript just with GRXJS. It's divided into three parts. So let's focus on the first part first. Basically, we have a button that can fetch some articles and another button that can fetch the same list of articles, but here. So it's very simplified, but basically it happens quite often that we duplicate some piece of data in two places of the user interface. What's more, sometimes it happens that the, the, the data we're fetching is rather static, static so it doesn't make sense to <clears throat> fetch it all over again. What we'd like to do is we'd like to cache it. So store it in memory instead of fetching it every time. So maybe let me quickly show you the API <clears throat> that we are calling. This is the Swagger UI, which, uh, which can be used to explore REST APIs. So it's a very simple endpoint to which I can send a GET request and what I get in response is just an array, <clears throat> JSON array of objects. Each article has some ID and some title. So let's take a look at the code. <clears throat> I already have some code here. 
So first I find these HTML elements on the page. I have the first button, the second button, the first select element, the second select element. Then I have a function that updates the UI with the response I've got from the server. It's setting in HTML. Don't do that. <laughs> and then finally, <clears throat> some RxJS code. So basically, I take the button, the first button, and I create a stream of click events from it. Then I switch to a new stream. For each click, I switch to a new stream. And that stream is a stream of, that will emit the response from the server. The response to this URL slash articles. URL is configured here. So as I mentioned in the introduction, calling some service can be looked at, calling an endpoint can be looked at as a observable stream that emits a single value. Then I have a retry operator so that if this stream emits an error, retry will cause the whole thing to resubscribe to the stream of clicks. Otherwise, it would stop working after the first time it, it emits an error. All right, so <clears throat> we'd like to add some caching here, right? And if we look at the network tab in Chrome, now, obviously, every time I click, there is a new request. Some requests are canceled if I click very quick because of the switch map operator. So the first step would be to not create a new stream on every click, because here in the switch map operator, I pass a function that will create a new stream for every possible click. So let me extract this stream so that only so that I only create it once and I can then use it twice. I can use it in both streams. Okay. So let's see if it helped in any way. I click here <coughs> once. And I clicked here a second time, and I got the second request. So it didn't solve our problem. And the reason for that is this stream returned by ajax.getjson is a cold stream. It's a cold observable. The cold observable is a observable that starts emitting values every time there is a new subscription. And here, we are making a new subscription <clears throat> on every click. Actually, the switch map operator is, is making the new subscription on every click. So for this to work, so, so for this to, to, to somehow cache this value, we need to turn the cold observable to a hot observable. With hot observable, subscribing to the stream don't cause a meeting of doesn't, subscribing to a stream doesn't cause new values to be emitted. It doesn't affect the state of the stream. And <clears throat> one way to make a cold observable, a hot observable, is to use the share operator. And actually, we need a special <clears throat> variant of share operator, which is share replay. So share replay will create a replay subject underneath and the, when, <clears throat> when, the, when the stream is subscribed to for, for the first time, a subscription will be made to the original stream. However, this value emitted by this stream will be <clears throat> published on the replay subject. So the next subscriptions made on that stream will get the value from replay subject. And I need to specify the size of the buffer so basically, how many values do I want my replay subject to remember? And I, I just need a single value. So let's give it a try. Click get articles. There was a request. 
<clears throat> I click it again, and no request, and the, the list was populated immediately. If I click here again and again, there are no more requests. So, uh, we just implemented a, a very simple caching mechanism with a single RxJS operator. Cool. Let's now move to the second example. So, <clears throat> in the second example, we can fetch a price of a stock. We need to type the stock symbol. But the problem with this endpoint is that it sometimes throws an error. 503, which is service unavailable, and it simulates the fact that some services might be overloaded. There are too many... What did just happen? Hmm. Oops, my computer restarted. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Well, let's give it a couple of minutes. Sorry for that. I have no idea why it happened. It's, it's a blue screen, it's just like Windows. <laughs> The first time it happened to me. <laughs> oh, it's... I'm really uh, disconnecting everything. Okay. Maybe that as well. Be that there. Jesus. Hmm. Is the presentation here? No, no, it's on, it's on GitHub. Uh, <laughs> you can try to get your computer. That doesn't look like it's... Uh, yeah. I'm really sorry for that. <clears throat> My computer keeps restarting for some reason. has a Mac, so yeah, get it. yeah, Let's like to, uh, it's going to take yeah. some time to set up everything yeah, because oh no, it's like really never happened to me. Hey, uh, yeah, I haven't done GitHub, but it's actually two projects. Awesome. Thank you so we, yeah, thank you. We can give it a quick try. Uh, 
Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry. I, apparently, my computer broke. I'm going to try to run this from another computer, but it is going to take like five minutes. So, really sorry. Uh, yeah. Where is the backslash? Uh, I need the backslash. Yeah, no okay, thank you. <laughs> guy and uh, I didn't push the API but okay maybe that's even fine no, I must have might be in work, actually. oh so it's gone a little further okay <laughs> okay Okay. Started. It's, this is no, it's, it's gone. Okay. Uh, okay. Where I can it? do it. Okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, actually, I might use the remote API. I think so. There is hope. This code is here. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think we are back in the game. <laughs> really sorry for that. So, uh, yeah, 
lost quite a lot of time, so I'm gonna jump to the third example, which is the most interesting, I think. Uh, and maybe if we have time, we'll do the second. Okay, so uh, in the third example, as, as I said in the beginning, we'll implement a polling scenario. So there is, uh, we have, I've built a very simple API that simulates sentiment analysis. So you can write some text and it will analyze the text telling you whether it has a positive emotion or negative emotion. And the idea here is that such operation might be a long running operation. So let's say it can take like a minute or five minutes. And it means that within, it, it won't complete within a single request. I don't want the browser to wait for five minutes to get the response to, to my request. So instead, I've got an API <clears throat> that has some endpoints to start an, analy an analysis, to cancel an analysis, and to get the status of an analysis. Let me show you this API in Swagger. Yeah, so I've got this endpoint to start an analysis task. Let me try it out. So what I've got <coughs> in response is not the result of analysis, but it's a uh, it's an object that has an ID of the analysis task I just started, and it has its status, which is in progress. Then I can inspect the status of the analysis. So it finished and the result is negative. In, in my demo API, the analysis takes between five and 15 seconds. And finally, <clears throat> there is an endpoint to cancel an analysis. So if we, like this analysis can be resource int intensive, so if the user is no longer interested in the result, we want to cancel it so that we don't waste backend resources. <clears throat> so what I have here is a simple text field and two buttons, one to start the analysis and the second is to cancel an analysis. Uh, nope, okay. So again, <clears throat> there is some boilerplate code here already. So the input element, the results section, somewhere to put the results, the analyze button and the cancel button. Then I have a function to update the results section based on the status of the task. And I have some <clears throat> functions to trigger the, the calls. So <clears throat> start analysis, get task status, cancel task, all of them return observable streams. And finally, <clears throat> I have already created the streams for clicks. <clears throat> so analyze button click stream and cancel button click stream. All right, so <clears throat> what we're gonna do is for every click, we first going to start analysis, then we will be checking the status of the analysis every second until we get a status different than in progress. And later we'll add cancellation to the mix. So let's start with the analyze button click stream. Oh, that's a Portuguese keyboard. That's gonna be tricky. <laughs> and let's switch it switch this stream. Well, actually, first I'm gonna map it to the... Oh. <laughs> oh, got it. So I'm, I'm mapping the stream of clicks to a stream of text P1 
pieces in, that are in the input field, in this input field. So now I will switch to a new stream. where for each piece of text, I start the analysis. Okay, so now I'd like to get the status of the analysis and I like to keep getting it until it's finished. So first of all, let's again switch to a new stream. We take a task and we call get task status and we pass the task ID because the start analysis endpoint return the task object which has the ID. <clears throat> so now I want to repeat this call and for that I can use a very nice operator called repeat. The problem is that this operator will just repeat these calls indefinitely and there will be no delays between the calls. So actually what I'd like to do is to introduce some delay. So let's do it first and for that we need a special variant which is repeat one. <clears throat> repeat one, it's, it's a very generic operator that can Basically, it allows you to control when you want to repeat. And you describe when to repeat by providing a function that takes a stream of, that emits whenever the source observable completes. And you return a new stream that will emit whenever you want to actually subscribe again, when you want to retry. So we pass a function that takes the stream of completions and we want to return a new stream. And when this new stream emits, we, we, we want to retry. So we just want to delay. We want to retry one second after the original stream completed. So we can simply use the delay operator. Okay, so <clears throat> we solved one problem. We introduced the delay, but we only need to repeat on as long as the status of the analysis task is in progress. For that, we can use another operator called take while. So as I just said, we will keep doing this as long as status is <laughs> single quote. That's a ah, thank you. <laughs> and <clears throat> actually, if I left it like this, I would get all the status responses when the status was in progress, but what I'm actually interested in is the one response after that. So the first response that doesn't satisfy this predicate. Fortunately, RxJS supports that and they introduced it very recently. I can specify a flag which indicates whether this should be inclusive or not. If inclusive is true, then I will also get the first response that doesn't satisfy this predicate. All right, so <clears throat> now let's subscribe to this stream and let's update the UI on every call. And let's give it a try. So input some data, click analyze. And the first call was the call to, to start the analysis. And now we are polling. And finally, the last call 
returned status finished, the result positive, and the result is shown here. So it <clears throat> kind of works, but what I'd like to do now is to support cancellation, because now if I click very fast here, I will start a lot of requests, a lot of analysis tasks on the backend, but I'm only interested in the last one. But the backend will not know about that, so it will keep processing, keep analyzing. And what I should actually do in this case, to as soon as I get a new request, uh, a new button click, I should cancel the analysis that is already in progress. So, well, and as a bonus, we would like to also cancel analysis with this button. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a subject. It's a new subject. And the semantics of this subject is that when, when I emit something on this subject, I want to cancel the, last, the current analysis task. So I can tap into this stream. And on every button click, I'm going to emit something on the subject. Cool. So now I need to take this subject and start actually canceling, start, start sending cancel requests. So I subscribe to the subject and trigger cancel task. But here I have a problem because cancel, with cancel task, I need to specify the ID of the task that I want to cancel. So how do I get that? I know that this stream will emit task objects. So the latest value of emitted by this stream will be a task object representing the current analysis. So that's exactly what I need. If I, <coughs> if I can get hold of this object, I get, get the ID of the task to cancel. So let me extract this thing to a separate variable. And here I will subscribe to this variable. <coughs> and now, I'm going to combine this stream with something else. So I just said that I need the latest value emitted by this stream. So I can use with latest operator. With latest from, actually. <clears throat> so the way it works is that this stream will emit a pair. Every time this stream emits something, a pair will be emitted, and the first item of the pair will be the value from this stream. The second item of the pair will be the value <coughs> of this stream. Mm. Square brackets. <laughs> Can somebody help me? Sorry. <laughs> I need square brackets. Jesus, I'm blind. <laughs> it's, uh, oh shit, this is a Mac. Uh, <laughs> like this. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, sorry for my voice. I think the air conditioning in my hotel did something to me. So, as I said, it's a tuple. I'm not interested in the first value, but i interested in the second value in the tuple, which is the task. And now I have the task, so I can cancel. Cool, so let's give it a try. And actually, it will not work yet. Something strange just happened. Two calls were made. And wh why is that the case? 
So, again, it's a problem of cold observables because this stream is a cold observable. So every new subscription will call, will cause a new, will, will, will cause the stream to emit again. So in consequence, it will cause a new server call. And we are making two subscriptions here because that's the first one and that's the second one. And remember what we had to do to take make a cold observable a hot one, we can again use the share operator. Without the subject now, because we don't need to cache, so actually we don't want to cache anything. So let's give it a try. Yeah, it looks better now, but there are no cancellation calls, right? And the reason for that is again called observables because cancel task returns a stream and it's a cold stream which means that it won't do anything until I subscribe to it right it's, it's just this so what I need to do here is subscribe now it's a nested subscribe I could do this with switch map but it's not the point so let's try this so I started an analysis, let me click again, and here it goes. It's a cancel, analyze, and we are polling again. And I can do it like all the time. There is one more thing we can do. Here we are polling for the status of the task. And actually, I know that as soon as a cancellation request was emitted, I shouldn't be polling anymore. So I can say that I want to take values from this stream until something is emitted on cancel subject. Cool, so we still have 13 minutes left. So I think I will try to run the second example very quickly. Uh, so that was the example with stocks. So I already started explaining that um, that we have a service that sometimes throws an errors, five or three, because it can be overloaded. So I simulated that by throwing an error with a 50% change chance. So again, I have some HTML element, elements, the button, the input element, and the section. I create a stream of, click, of clicks. I map it to the value of the input. And then I switch to a new stream in which I simply fetch the, the price of the stock by passing the symbol. Then there is some error handling. I just want to print the error message. All right, so how I'd like to solve this problem is I would like to retry. When I get an error, I, I would like to automatically retry and do it so many times until I get a proper answer. Because now the user has to retry manually and it's not really very convenient. So, I can use the retry operator. Let me quickly try. Oh, you see, it is retrying. But actually, it's no ideal, ideal because there is no delay between retries. And if I have a backend service that is already overloaded and I'm just throwing new, a lot of new requests at it, it's no good. I should at least introduce some delay between those retries. So, like we use repeat operator, the retry operator can behave in, behaves in a very similar way. So I take a stream of errors and I can map it and I I pass a function that takes the stream of error 
errors and returns a stream that controls when I want to retry. So again, I will just delay. Mm, no imports. Try one and delay. Okay. Okay, so now it's a little better. I'm retrying every second. But sometimes it's not good enough. Because if I know that a service is overloaded, well, actually, maybe I shouldn't be retrying even that often. Maybe I should increase the interval between my retries so that I don't contribute to overloading the, of the service. So now let's change it so that first I retry after one second, then I retry after two seconds, then I retry after three seconds, and so on and so on. So here, mm, what I want to do is, yeah, sorry, it was here. So I have this stream of errors, and now I'm delaying each error by one second. Instead, I want to multiply this by something, by the, the index of error that was thrown. So instead of this, I'm going to switch to a new stream. And we switch map. It turns out that it can also take a two-argument function. And if I make it a two-argument function, the first argument will be the thing emitted by the source stream, and the second argument will be the index of that element. So that's exactly what I need. So I'm switching to a new stream, and I'm going to return a timer. Timer creates a stream that will simply emit after, I mean, something after given amount of time. So I will multiply 1,000 by... Mm. Uh, mm. No, that's probably... Uh, it's here. Sure. Ah, thank you. <laughs> so I'm multiplying 1,000 by the index of the error. Right, um, so let me try that again. Yeah, so the first retry happened immediately. Well, let me get a longer sequence. Yeah, you can see the interval is increasing. The first retry happened immediately, the second after one second, the third after two seconds, and so on and so on. We can also see that on the waterfall chart that the intervals are increasing. All right, but sometimes even that is, isn't enough because I'm increasing the interval between retries, but only linearly. And some services that have some public APIs available actually want you as a caller to increase the interval exponentially. And that strategy is called exponential backoff. So by doing, by increasing the interval exponentially, I will double it every time I'm, I'm making the call. So instead of multi multiplying 1000 by I, I'm going to take two to the power of I. And since that's a small number, I will multiply it by 100. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try, yeah, let's me refresh. Let's try a longer sequence of failures. Oh, is there? Yeah, let's maybe try a couple more times. 
Yeah, so now the, the intervals are increasing exponentially. And it's actually quite cool that if you look at the waterfall chart, it looks like the graph of an exponential function in mathematics. Maybe if I get an even longer sequence, it will be more visible. Yeah, but unfortunately, the API decides to be successful. <laughs> Okay, anyway, this is available publicly, so you can play with it. Mm -hmm. Cool, so, yeah, actually I managed to do all the free demos, despite the technical problems. So, quickly wrapping up, uh, what we have learned is we have looked at three common issues that come up when calling remote APIs. We solved, the first one was caching, and we mostly used the share replay operator to solve it. The second one is was the second one was working with long running operations, managing long running operations with an API that can start an operation, pause operation, cancel operation, and so on. And for that, we use repeat when operator to implement polling. And finally, we looked at working with an unstable service. And we mostly use the retry when operator to, to solve this problem. So I don't have access to my slides, but I have some resources for you. So on my blog, codifstyle.info slash jnation, you can find the links to GitHub to find all these demos. Also, this API is deployed on, uh, on Heroku, so you can play with it. And here is the source code of, of the demos. Uh, okay, I, I probably forgot to publish it, but I will it immediately after the talk. Okay, so thank you very much. I'm really sorry for the technical problems, but I hope you liked it anyway. Thank you. Any questions? There is one, I think. Or no, okay, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's dark, so I didn't see. Okay, no questions. So thank you very much. <laughs>